Congratulations on this film. Your performance in it was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Now, I know this isn't your first war film. You were in Dunkirk a few years ago. So what drew you, drew you to Benediction and to this role in particular? Uh, <clears throat> the script is fantastic. So that was the first, always the first port of call. And I knew it was quite a special part. Um, I thought what he goes through, what he gets to do is really interesting as an actor. So um, that essentially, and the fact I got offered the role, that always helps. So um, yeah, that. Yeah. Now, when you're portraying a real life person, I imagine there's a lot of research involved. What steps did you take to prepare for this role? Uh, I mean, it all came from the script, but I, I because I'm playing a, a writer, a poet, there's a sort of plethora of 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 material. So his diaries, as well as his writing, is his poetry. There's just so much on him. Um, the only thing that's missing is maybe like a taped interview of him. So um, there was there was a, there was plenty there. So um, yeah, I was quite blessed with that. Yeah, and this is a war movie that takes place almost entirely away from the battlefield. In your eyes, how does that serve the film's message as it relates to Siegfried's life and World War One itself? Uh, I, I think it's hugely important uh, that it doesn't spend a lot of time, any time on the battlefield, really, because uh, it is sort of a, a film about... It, one of the things is about his PTSD, which he suffered from, I think, in quite a long, drawn-out sense. He didn't die until the 1960s. He was one of the few great war poets that made it through the war and had to deal with that guilt. Uh, so, and and also seeing the effects of war on on the wider society is is something that is a little bit more interesting as it's not done as much. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And Siegfried struggles to build relationships and also copes with his experience in the war. How did you approach combining that trauma with the personal turmoil he faces afterward concerning his sexuality? I think uh, I think the, the over the overriding one was the war because that was the most sort of traumatic I think for him for anyone um, you know and nothing that we that I can relate to really so um, it was very important to 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 keep that in the back of one's head when playing him because I don't think it's something he ever forgot or could forget. Uh, so I think compared to the other struggles he's, he had in his life, that was the monumental one that I think left its mark. Mm -hmm. And we see him develop relationships with several men throughout the film, notably Wilfred, Ivor and Stephen. In what ways do you feel that they each impacted his life? I think I think Wilfred Owen was the better poet and I think he noticed that quite quickly so I think that that really sort of took, gave his ego a bashing and I think with Ivan Avello who was a sort of notorious cad so to speak he was he was just very unlucky in love in a way so soon but I think I'm not sure he would have wanted it any other way I'm not sure he wanted to have one person that he was with always and happily ever ever after I think the circles that he moved in and the people that he met he was just sort of seduced by everybody and I think people were seduced by him so, um, yeah, I think I think it's the way he, he would have wanted it. Yeah. And I also found it interesting that there were several sequences depicting Siegfried later in life. Did you coordinate at all with Peter to keep your portrayals in line with each other? No, nope, not at all. No, we, we actually shot, I shot everything up front before Peter. So I didn't meet Peter until I'd shot most of my stuff, um, which was very on purpose, I think, on Terence's part. So it really meant that we were two different people, which was quite cool because there's such a age gap or time. So um, it really helped to sort of show you the impact of time. Yeah. And given that war movies most commonly focus on the battles themselves and the larger figures involved in them, for you, what's the importance of telling stories such as Siegfried's, which are often forgotten in film? Um, I, th I think it's... It's if, uh, about war films in particular. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I think it's great to show, um, you know, someone that was very anti-war, you know, with something that we quite, we always associate with recent wars or or the Vietnam War. Um, and this is way, 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 way before that, obviously. 
And so it's nice to be reminded that, you know, there were trailblazers in that field and conscientious objectors during that time could be completely ostracized from society, could could be shot, you know, if he was in the army, which he was, he could be court-martialed and shot. So it's a sort of very different time to do what he did. Um, yeah, quite a scary time. Yeah, and kind of going off of that, LGBTQ stories set in the past so often and tragically, as was the case in this film, how did you approach bringing a level of humanity and nuance to the character so it's more than just a depressing story? Well, I, a lot of that was in the script. He has a, he has a sense of humour, um, and I think it's vital that there's a sense of humour in these kind of films because, like you say, it's a, it is quite a tragic ending, but not an obviously tragic ending because he, he lives and survives and just knows that he's got years and years ahead of him. Um, where he's been through something that he was unlucky enough to be through the First World War. So um, I think uh, it's vitally important to have some some sense of humour, yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the script, did you have a favourite scene to shoot in the film? Uh, anything with uh, Kate Phillips or anything where I was dancing uh, was great fun. Uh, anything set in these some of the places we got to shoot in big massive homes that are just were just stunning um but yeah anything dancing was great fun to do and what was it like working with such a renowned director like terence davies it was fantastic he's uh it's great to work with a director that knows exactly what he wants um and um it was a very personal story for him so i was it was a great privilege to be the one to sort of um to be at the front and center of it so it, and it was it's always great to watch people that make great films work yeah definitely and finally in your process learning about sacred and playing him in this film what quality of his or aspect of his life resonates with you most uh his uh, his his re regret and also maybe his insecurity as as, a, as an artist so to speak is probably the thing that i could probably most relate to obviously so um it's just interesting to see that that just never changes over, over you know, the hundred years or so since it doesn't change. All right, Jack. Well, thank you for your time today. Again, congratulations on this film and I wish you the best.